In today's video, I'm going to show you an AI agent that I built that is actually able to research all of your leads individually, research each person's LinkedIn profile and website. And based on that information, it can generate ultra personalized messages for LinkedIn and email that you can also use on your outreach to make it more personalized, hopefully book more calls, make more money. And who knows, you might eventually be able to afford a yacht. No, I can't promise you that. What I can promise you though is that personalized outreach is what is currently working in 2025. And if you're not using AI to personalize your outreach, you're doing it absolutely wrong because the capability is here and other people are doing it. So you might as well start doing it today with this workflow. Now, without wasting any time, let's get into it. We have a very basic manual trigger here, which starts a workflow every time you click test. And then we go through this Google sheet where we pretty much retrieve all the data that exists inside this uh, sheet right here. Right? You can see only have one lead. If you have a thousand leads or 10,000 leads, it works in the exact same way. What's important is you organize your sheet in this format. So we have the first name, last name, company name, website URL, email address, and LinkedIn URL. And we also leave some room for LinkedIn messages and email messages. Now, of course, this system can also con be configured to generate like email follow-ups and LinkedIn follow-ups in a personalized way where you can plug into whatever tool you're going to be using, maybe Dripify or DuckSoup or Instantly. But for now, it's able to only generate the first personalized message, which is more than enough anyways. Once we retrieve all the information, then we go through a filter. And what the filter does is pretty much only outputs the people that do have a website URL and also do have a LinkedIn URL available. Just because if somebody doesn't have this information, you know, in many cases, you might scrape some leads from Apollo and then not everyone is going to have a website or net, not everyone is going to have a LinkedIn URL, but we need that information in order to uh, scrape their LinkedIn and also scrape their website to get some data to then write the personalized messages from here is going to go into a loop very basic note and what the loop allows us to do is run this entire process for each lead at a time so it's going to go through the linkedin information scraper then the website information scraper so we have two sources that we use to get information from and then it's going to write the personalized message and then it's going to loop back, grab the next lead, and it's going to repeat the process. And once it finally goes through every lead, it will then update the entire Google sheet with the appropriate LinkedIn message and email message. But let's have a closer look. So the first thing I do here is I set all the LinkedIn scraper details. So we're using Appify for that. And you can see I'm setting as a variable the actor ID, which is pretty much which actor I want to use on Appify to scrape somebody's uh, LinkedIn profile. Then I'm using my Appify API. And then I also set the LinkedIn URL as uh, another variable. So once we set up those three variables, then we're able to make our first API call to Appify. And I want to pull up Appify and actually show you specifically which uh, actor I'm using. No, I don't want the endpoints. I want the console, Appify console, boom. And I want to show you the specific actor that we're using here. So let's see. So this right here is the LinkedIn profile scraper actor that I use. And I'm using this one because it doesn't require any cookies. You can see all it needs is a URL of the profile that you want to scrape. This is a post request. And this is the endpoint URL that you want to use whenever you want to start an actor on Appify. So it's pretty much HTTPS Appify or API.appify.com. And then this is the uh, actor ID, which we set up in a variable beforehand uh, slash runs. And then we set up the headers, which is content type application JSON, the authorization, which is pretty much bearer space and the API key of our uh, Appify account. And then we also configure the JSON of the actor inside our uh, HTTP request. So you pretty much copy this, you paste it here, and then you replace the URL with the variable that you said in the previous node. And by the way, guys, if you're wondering how to, you know, understand APIs for Appify much better then come to Google type Appify API endpoints, and then open the first link. And here you're going to see the entire documentation for all the APIs inside Appify. And uh, you pretty much have to uh, scroll through this. Let's say you want to find the uh, the one that allows you to run an actor. This is the one right here. So it's post run an actor. You can see here exactly what the headers need to be. And then you can also see the endpoint that you are supposed to use. So this is the endpoint that I'm using. Um, and I just replace the actor ID with the actual like actor, the specific actor ID that I want to use. And the ID of actors in Appify is located here 
on this uh, URL. This is the uh, the ID. Now let's go back to it. So this node pretty much starts the Appify actor. So it makes a request to this specific actor and it says, hey, I want you to run and just scrape information uh, from this LinkedIn profile. Then we are checking the status of that actor. So we want to uh, have a look whether or not the status finished running. So this is a get request. This is the endpoint you want to use. And the JSON data ID is something that you get by starting the first HTTP request that initiates the actor. And then here are all the uh, parameters, the headers, content type, JSON, authorization. This is a simpler request and this pretty much gives Gives you the status of the run that you made so you know when you want to retrieve the data later you're going to make another http request that is going to check the status and if the status is successful then we know that the actor finished running so from here we go into this if node which i have deactivated just because i was you know building it and i was doing some tests and we pretty much say if the status of this run that we did is succeeded move forward if the status of this run is anything else but succeeded, then wait for 10 seconds and then check the status again and go through this loop. And this is pretty much a safety feature. Theoretically, you don't really need these two nodes. You can just have like a wait node that waits like 30 seconds or, you know, whatever amount before you try to retrieve the scrape data. However, uh, I think this, uh, this kind of loop here is more efficient because we are making an API call to the actor and we ask, hey, if you finish running, let's move forward. There's no point in waiting unnecessarily. And also if you, if you just set a wait node, you wouldn't know if you are waiting more time than necessary or sometimes the, matter, the actor might take longer to finish as well. So this is like the most efficient, most predictable way of doing things. Then we set the ID of the successful run, which is another variable that we retrieve through the uh, HTTP request previously. And this is pretty much going to allow us to retrieve the data from Appify. So the whatever data the actor was able to scrape from LinkedIn, we're going to use this uh, endpoint here, which is also get request. And we're going to use the run ID as a variable inside the endpoint in order to get access to that information. So you see headers, content type, application, JSON authorization, bearer. Again, this is something that I found on the Appify uh, API documentation. So let's say you want to get, get data. Uh, you can see here, let's see, where is it? Get data set. So this is the, uh, the API call we are making, right? And it allows us to retrieve the output from the uh, the run that the actor did. So going back to N8N guys, you can see here all the information it retrieved from uh, my profile on LinkedIn, helping businesses make more money in less time with AI. You can see all the links. Um, I tried finding exactly where the about section is, but I couldn't find it. But in any case, it, it gets the scraped data. This is what this node does. So we have the, that data inside the system. And then we go to the next scraper, which is what scrapes the information on people's website. And by the way, guys, technically this is not even required because most people, they have way more data about what they do on their website rather than on LinkedIn. Uh, but I, I thought, hey, it's good practice. Why not scrape both? This is the actor that I'm using to scrape websites. So you can see. And by the way, before you connect any actor to NADN, what you want to do is make sure you run the actor at least once on your Appify account uh, with the right configuration. So you have the JSON ready, which then you can copy and then <clears throat> paste inside NADN. Here we do the same logic that we did before. So we set up all the variables that we're going to need, the actor ID, the Appify API, and also the URL of the website. This is not completely necessary to set the URL because we have access to it inside our, uh, you know, where is it? Inside our trigger or when we get the information from the Google Sheets node. Uh, so let me, uh, let me find it, man. Now it got personal. Yeah, so you can see we have all the information here. So it's not really necessary to set the website URL in a new variable. And by the way, make sure that your websites do have this HTTPS in front of them. Otherwise, the actor is not going to be able to uh, to scrape them. This is like the data format that it requires. But anyway, once we set up this information, then we make an API call to start the scraper using the same endpoint as before, same exact configuration. The only difference is, of course, going to be the JSON. 
So this JSON right here is something that I copied from the specific actor. I pasted it inside here and then I changed this URL right here with the variable. So every time it runs for each person, it's going to be a different, uh, a different URL. Uh, then again, when we start the scraper, then we check the status of that scraper to see if the run is uh, still going or if it finished or if it failed. And then it goes through the same logic system that I showed you earlier. Once the actor actually is successful, then we set in a new variable the run ID, which is this one right here. And then we use that run ID, which I think is also called data set ID. That's what it's called if you're uh, looking to retrieve it yourself. Uh, and then we make another API call to Appify in order to retrieve that information. So here is the information about the website. AI Solved is a leading AI automation agency that helps businesses increase revenue. Heck yeah, that's exactly who we are. AI Solved is a leading. Okay, we, we, we read that already. Uh, you can see like a bunch of HTML here, a bunch of information, more than enough to write a really good personalized message. And then once we have all the information, then here is like the almost the last step, which is where we write the personalized message for LinkedIn. So you can see the input details of this agent, the name of each lead, the last name of each lead, the company name, uh, for some reason, I have the company name twice, and then the description of their website, the their website content, some additional website text, and then their LinkedIn bio. So this is the input to this agent. And then you can also uh, read the prompt right here. AI <clears throat> agent prompt, LinkedIn icebreaker generator, max 180 characters. Now, the reason I set it up this way is because on LinkedIn, when you're doing outreach, you're only allowed to send messages up to 200 characters if you don't have the sales navigator, which by the way, we can give it to you for 50% off inside my automator school community, shameless plug. And then, uh, you know, if you do have the premium version of, of uh, LinkedIn, which is called sales navigator, then you can actually uh, send messages up to 300 characters long. In any case, you can see the prompt right here. You're an expert LinkedIn copywriter. Your job is to write a short high reply icebreaker message based on the leads data below. And then you can see all the, the requirements here, max 180 characters, personalized and feels human written, mention something specific from their LinkedIn or website, no sales page, call to action or generic filler. So you can read it. And then we also have some rules, always include the person's name inside your output, always add short, non-intrusive or salesy question in the end. And you can see an example here. So Yanis, your work at AI Soft, automating up to 80% of lead tasks is impressively uh, is impressive. Curious which industry has surprised you the most with AI results. Uh, and that the answer to that question will be, I think, marketing agencies. But anyways, let's move on. Um, and then we also do the same thing. We give us input all the data that we scrape to this agent. And the prompt here is a little different is uh, it specifically focuses on writing email messages instead. Uh, and I want to show it, I want to show this to you guys because it's very, uh, it's very interesting. You can see AI agent prompt personalized code email generator, AI workshop offer, and you're going to understand in a bit what this is. This is how I recommend people sell AI automations and AI agents to businesses. You are an expert cold email copywriter, writer, short, engaging and personalized cold email using the structure below. The goal is to get the lead interested in a free AI workshop, no sales pitch, just value. Then you can see the email structure here, icebreaker, one or two lines, reference something specific from the leads business website or LinkedIn, show that we've done some homework, be personal, relevant, and curious. Then call to action, invite to free a workshop, invite them to a free a workshop tailored to their industry, describe the value clearly and concisely, what AI agents are, how their competitors are using them, ways AI agents can add value to their specific niche and a live demo of an AI agent in action, just like Rambo. And then the output, return only that final email, keep it short, clear, and human, not robotic. And here's an example output. And then you can also see some rules that I set afterwards, uh, just to get more control over the output. And before we test it, guys, the beautiful thing about this system is that it's super customizable. And you know, once we have this like information, all the heavy lifting is done. And you can also generate messages for Instagram, Facebook outreach, 
SMS outreach. You can also generate follow-up messages for each lead. It's just gonna take some configuration right here on this sheet, uh, but it's a matter of like 20 minutes of work maybe. And in addition to that, you can also change the way the agent is writing the messages. So maybe if you have a different process in place, However, this is a process that I use and all my students inside school use, which is working perfectly. Some people are making like $15,000, $20,000 a month with it. So if you are going to be doing outreach for your AI agency, this is a process I recommend you use. But you can, of course, like customize the way this agent is writing messages. And with that said, I'm going to save it. And uh, I have to unpin all the data here. So I'm going to click P. I think now all the data is unpinned. And now let's give it a quick test. So let's start this workflow right here. Uh, so you can see it already, well, it was already pinned on the trigger, but in any case, it generated all the personalized messages and then it's supposed to have added them inside the sheet. And you can see here, Yanis, your work at AI solved automating up to 80% of leads tasks is impressive. Curious which industry has surprised you the most with AI results. And then here is another one. Now that I see it, guys, it needs a little better formatting. So I might need to take some, uh, make some changes inside the email message prompt. Uh, but here is a message. Hi, Yanis. I really like how AI Solve focuses on boosting businesses' efficiency and revenue through AI automation. Helping companies make more money in less time is such a smart mission. We're hosting a free AI workshop tailored to AI automation leaders like you, where we are going to cover what AI agents are, how your competitors are leveraging them, practical ways they can add value for agencies like AI soft and a live demo showing you uh, how AI agents work in action, no strings attached. Would you be interested in joining? So this is pretty much it guys. I hope you got value out of this. I'm going to be making this uh, entire template available to you inside the vault of my premium school community. And you can see you get all my uh, systems here, the Instagram outreach AI agent, the LinkedIn and email outreach agent, uh, fully automated YouTube videos, my 17 agent personal, personal assistant. You also get a course on building AI agents, which we're uh, currently filming with the head developer of my agency. You can see like an hour long video about the basics inside NADN live builds. Uh, you also get a course on how to make money selling AI agents. And this is the most robust process ever. On level four, you unlock the vault, which includes over 100 AI agent templates from other school communities. So you don't even have to join them. You can see here, like I, I, I genuinely uh, robbed all of them and I added them inside here. So now you can get all the templates from your favorite creators in one place. Uh, so you don't have to pay like a bunch of different school uh, subscriptions, you get free GHL accounts on level six. And if you're, uh, if you're kind of wondering, would it be easy for me to level up guys, we have people who are leveling up like crazy within a week, they reach level five or level six. So, uh, if you're interested in this, it's going to be the first link in the description. Thanks baby. I'll see you in the next video.